Hi, and uh, welcome back to my channel. In the last uh, couple of episodes, I've been uh, playing around with my new HP 461A amplifier. So I really bought uh, this amplifier to learn about, uh, you know, some of the aspects of amplifiers. And uh, indeed, uh, I've been doing a couple of measurements to, to verify the specifications on, on this unit. And one of the things I wanted to check is its uh, noise level, noise floor, noise figures, all this uh, terminology. And so in the last uh, week or so, I've, I've been uh, really researching quite a bit and I've learned uh, uh, a couple of things. And in this video, I would like uh, to share them uh, with you, keeping in mind that I'm just an hobbyist. So, uh, you know, I'm not uh, an authority or a reference by any means on, on RF. Uh, my nickname is RF Noob, as you know, and uh, I just want to do this uh, in order, perhaps this is useful uh, to somebody else, but in any case it's useful for me, you know, to, just to record what uh, at some point I learned, uh, I find it interesting to keep record of uh, uh, my progress, basically. So anyway, uh, the noise uh, figure is a very important element of amplifiers, so for example, now I'm in this uh, website of Minicircus, I'm looking at this amplifier, and as you can see in the data sheet, really the noise uh, level, the low noise uh, figure that we get here of 4.2 dB is one of the key features. If I go to the data sheet of my amplifier, the HP 461A, uh, I see that uh, the noise is expressed in a different way, it's called uh, equivalent wideband input noise level and it says that it's less than 40 uh, microvolts okay so this is expressing microvolts uh, for wideband input noise this is expressed in uh, um, what is it in, um, in dbm and so yeah uh, basically uh, i had to to learn what all these things means and this is a bit uh, the topic of this video so just to simplify a little bit of the discussion, I'm not going to uh, discuss the amplifier itself. I'm going to discuss how to measure noise in general, and in particular in this video, the noise floor of the spectrum analyzer. This is a little bit uh, more convenient because the spectrum analyzer is the unit itself making the measurements, and so it's going to be uh, faster and simpler. In future videos, I will also show how uh, I learn how to uh, measure the noise level of uh, the amplifier or even the HRF or other radios. So uh, before I start with the measurements, let uh, me uh, prepare the discussion with just a couple of uh, you know illustrative uh, pictures that I've made here. So the conceptual uh, framework that we are considering is that of um, of a unit. Uh, here, in this case, is going to be a spectral analyzer. But as as I can say, as as I said, uh, I could uh, apply this uh, to amplifiers, to the HRF, uh, to radios, or anyway, whatever has an uh, RF input. Okay, and so all these units receive an input, uh, an input signal, this uh, signal here, and all signals are generally uh, a sum of two things the signal itself, like a radio message or whatever, and a little bit of noise that it's always there, it's unavoidable in the real world, okay? So an ideal unit, like an ideal uh, spectrum analyzer, would just uh, take this input and do something with it, okay? So like, for example, uh, depict uh, its spectrum. However, in the real world, we work with imperfect uh, spectrum analyzers, or amplifiers, or radios, and all these imperfect uh, units add some additional noise that I've uh, added here, okay? So uh, really th what they are evaluating is the signal together with the signal noise and uh, together with some additional noise that here I call the spectrum analyzer noise. And the amplifier would be an amplifier noise, okay? And the HRF would have an HRF internal noise. And this is really what uh, we want to evaluate uh, properly, what we want to measure. Of course, the lower the lower the noise, the spectrum analyzer noise, the better it is because we are not uh, covering the original signal, okay? And uh, conversely, of course, higher the noise, uh, the poorest the performance of the unit, okay? But how can we measure this uh, this uh, value here, this the strength basically of this noise? Well, this is uh, basically the topic of uh, of this video. 
And uh, the basic idea really is uh, to prepare some kind of uh, setup where the uh, element coming from here, so the signal and the associated noise, is known. And a uh, convenient way to do this uh, is uh, to basically terminate the input of the spectrum analyzer, so the input, with just a resistor, a 50 ohm resistor in this case. So if you have a look at my uh, spectrum analyzer at the moment, this is exactly what I've done. So I have uh, here a uh, small dummy load, which is a 50 ohm resistor, plugged at the input of the uh, spectrum analyzer. So really, um, this resistor, of course, is not producing any real signal, okay? There is no message pro produced by the, the resistor. However, like everything else, it produces noise. And this is called the thermal noise, okay? It's called thermal noise because uh, uh, basically the temperature in my room, uh, the ambient temperature, is exciting the electrons, the molecules in general, the atoms, but especially the electrons in, um, in the resistor. And the electrons moving are basically accelerating, and so they are changing the electric field. And so this change in electric field is basically this uh, noise voltage that we get out of the resistor. So this is uh, called uh, thermal noise, and uh, it's very well understood. So if we go um, to Wikipedia, it's the proper name is Johnson Nyquist noise. Nyquist is the guy who discovered this phenomenon. And, um, you know, it's very well studied and we know how strong this noise is for given uh, temperatures. So 300 Kelvin is the typical uh, ambient temperature and uh, we know what the strength of this uh, noise is. And so, coming back to the scenario that we have, we know what the noise is here. And so what the spectrum analyzer is reading at its input it's uh, this known noise plus some additional noise that we can now uh, measure since we know uh, this other uh, element of the sum here. And uh, right, so let me go back a second uh, here. And uh, here we have the equation, just out of curiosity, of uh, let me uh, enlarge a little bit the browser of uh, the thermal noise. And as you can see, its uh, strength, expressing watts, is a constant called the Boltzmann constant. Well, ignore it, it's just a numerical constant. Multiplied by the temperature. So uh, intuitively, high, the higher the temperature, uh, the more the electrons are excited and therefore the higher the noise. So it makes sense to have this uh, uh, coefficient here. Multiplies by the bandwidth. Okay, so let me illustrate uh, this, uh, this concept, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. Here I have the spectrum analyzer, and this is what it's measuring at the moment. So again, it's measuring the noise produced by the 50 ohm uh, um, dummy load at the input, plus its own internal noise. And as you can see, uh, the measurement is at the moment of uh, about minus 88 uh, dBm. Now, the important thing to observe here is that we are uh, sweeping the spectrum here from 0 to 1.8 gigahertz using a 3 uh, megahertz resolution bandwidth. This means that the spectrum analyzer is sweeping the, the spectrum using a bandpass filter of 3 megahertz. So it's looking at only 3 megahertz parts piece by piece. Okay. Now, look at what happens if I reduce uh, this resolution bandwidth by the 10 times, okay? So I'm going to reduce the span, let's say, to 30 megahertz. And as you can see now, the, the resolution bandwidth dropped accordingly, automatically to 300 kilohertz. And we basically, uh, so we divided uh, by the resolution bandwidth by a factor of 10. And indeed, uh, we have dropped more or less by 10 dB, so 10 times the power that we are measuring, okay? And this is uh, coherent uh, with this equation. The larger the bandwidth, uh, the larger that we observe, the larger uh, the noise power expressing watts, okay? And, and so this is just what uh, we observed. If we reduce the bandwidth uh, again by a factor of 10, so let me put a span of 3 megahertz. We should get a resolution bandwidth of 30 kilohertz, indeed. 
And again, as you can see, we basically dropped uh, by uh, another 10 dB. Okay? And, uh, and I could uh, continue to do this, uh, uh, of course. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we don't, do, we don't need uh, to do all the calculations. Here I have uh, depicted a, a table. So let me um, turn off the spectrum analyzer for a second. I've depicted a table where here I have frequency, so 3 MHz, we measure minus 88 dBm. Uh, if I, we express this in uh, watts, is 1.5 picowatts. By the way, uh, let me show you the equation for moving from watts to uh, dBm is the following. So, I mean, the power that gives uh, a reading of dBm of minus 88 is uh, the number W that satisfies this equation. And this is about 1.5 uh, uh, picowatts, as you can uh, read here. Uh, okay, anyway, at uh, 300 kilohertz, um, the power is uh, 10 times lower, okay, because we have uh, reduced the, the bandwidth uh, by 10 times. And so that corresponds more or less the reading that we had on the spectral analyzer was 97.5. So mathematically it should have been 98, you know, but there might be some uh, small uh, uh, reading errors or whatever. So we're taking these numbers to be accurate enough. If I move to uh, 3 kilohertz, I expect, uh, you know, starting from here, we are from moving to move from 3 megahertz to 3 kilohertz, we have to divide by 1000. So we expect to lose uh, about 30 dB, which corresponds to reducing the power by 1000, okay? So let's see uh, with the spectrum analyzer if this is confirmed. So let me move to a span of 300 kilohertz. This gives us uh, the resolution bandwidth, as you can see, of... Uh, um, sorry, span, I wrote a mega, so let me redo. Span of 300 uh, kilohertz. And indeed, we are getting this minus uh, 118, okay? So, which is the value that we just uh, estimated mathematically, okay? So, just by reducing 30 dB, or equivalently reducing the power by 1000. So, if I wanted now to uh, know how much uh, watts this number corresponds, it's simply uh, 1.5 picowatts divided by 1000, okay? So, let me write it uh, like that divided by 1000. Anyway, doing the mathematical calculation now, I can simply obtain the power uh, at the level of 1 hertz, okay? Um, and this is called the power density. So this is the terminology that is being used, and I use the letter DW to express it, okay? So it's going to be just uh, 1.5 picowatts, uh, divided by the bandwidth that we had here, so 3 millions, okay? So the value here is 1.5 picowatts divided by 3 uh, millions, okay? So 300 mega, uh, 3 megahertz. And, um, and the value here we can discover by taking, so once we call this, um, for example, this uh, DW, well, this is going to be uh, just the formula for converting from watts to uh, dBm. Uh, it's just 10 multiply logarithm base 10 of this DW uh, divided by this uh, 0 0.001. So this, the, the, um, the ratio between DW and 1 milliwatts, okay? This is the definition of dBm. Uh, right, so this is all math that we can do just from this uh, basic initial reading, or in, for that matter, any reading. So once we know the, the bandwidth uh, that we are looking at, so uh, here I should have written bandwidth, sorry, not uh, frequency, bandwidth, width. Um, we can calculate this density, which is again the power in watts or uh, dBm per hertz. Uh, now, it's interesting that the spectrum analyzer that I have allows, us, allows me to do the measurement automatically. If I go here to maker function uh, and I activate this uh, marker noise, uh, as you can see up there, uh, where is it? There, it's saying that um, we get minus 151 dBm for 1 Hz. So that's uh, 
uh, minus 151 dBm hertz. So this is our uh, power density expressed in dBm, minus 51, uh, 151. Okay, now uh, going back uh, to uh, uh, this uh, picture that we had at the beginning, so the spectrum analyzer here, uh, this sum, is reading some minus and 51 dBm when the bandwidth that we are looking is 1 Hz. So we know how much this is, uh, uh, so perhaps I should zoom a little bit more, so let me write bigger rather, minus 151, okay, dBm. Uh, we know how much this is uh, in uh, dBm uh, for 1 Hz because it's something that comes from uh, physics. So let's uh, go back again. Uh, it's basically just doing the solving this expression at room temperature, we get minus uh, uh, 174. Okay, so um, here we add. Minus, one, uh, minus 174 dBm. And so you can see that to reach this level of uh, uh, minus uh, 151, basically uh, we are going up uh, how much? 22 or 23 dB, more or less. Uh, sorry, 21 or uh, 20 or 9, uh, how much, sorry. Uh, either 24, 23, 24. Uh, so this noise level must be around uh, 20 to 23 dBm, okay? Again, this is uh, dBm per hertz. We are all measuring this value, the density, that uh, it's basically the, the, the bandwidth relative to just one hertz. But given this value, using this table, we can uh, obtain uh, the, the noise power for any bandwidth B, okay? So in watts, we just multiply by the bandwidth. And in dBm, uh, well, you know, multiplication becomes addition when taking the logarithm. So uh, it's going to be this, uh, this power, so minus uh, 151, plus 10 logarithm base 10 of the bandwidth. Okay? So anyway, this is the math that we have. And so uh, the difference that we have, I mean, this number, uh, the difference between uh, the minus 174 and uh, what we actually read, uh, so minus 151, which is uh, uh, this 22, 23 basically, is called the noise figure. So this is uh, really the noise figure is gives all the information we want about uh, the noise performance of the spectrum analyzer. From this noise figure we can uh, now compute several other equivalent figures. Um, I mean, um, way to express uh, this uh, this fact. But yeah, once we have this, uh, uh, we can uh, calculate others that are expressed in a different way, but they are in fact equivalent. Anyway, uh, before I move to that, uh, this uh, amplifier that we had at the beginning had a noise figure of 4.2 dB, okay? So, um, this means, uh, um, so, sorry, I mean, the noise figure, sorry, it's an exact to say, um, so the noise figure is expressed in dB, okay? dB down, uh, I mean, what is the, the difference in dB from minus 174 dBm and what is being read in dBm at the input here, okay? So the noise figure is, let's say, 22, 23 for this uh, uh, spectrum analyzer, and it is uh, um, only uh, 4.2 uh, dB for this amplifier. So, yeah, definitely the spectrum analyzer is much more noisy compared to this... Uh, uh, amplifier that we had uh, on the browser, but that's okay. This is not the the goal of the spectrum analyzer. Is of course not to be an extremely low, uh, you know, uh, low noise. Uh, this is just not designed to do that. There are some mixers inside that are, are introducing some noise and many things. So anyway, this is uh, the characterization of the noise figure of the spectrum analyzer. 
Okay, so here I have uh, written down a couple of other uh, common way to express the power of the noise, the internal noise of the spectrum analyzer. So we have just uh, uh, just discussed how to calculate uh, and what it means the noise figure, n f. So it's expressed uh, in uh, in dB. Sorry about that. And it's basically the ratio of uh, two things expressed logarithmically. Uh, the power of these uh, uh, 50 ohm resistors at uh, the noise produced by the 50 ohm resistor at uh, room temperature, which is minus 174, and so uh, the power seen uh, uh, by the spectrum analyzer. And so the difference between these two things is uh, 23 dB. Another important thing is the noise factor which is basically the same uh, uh, ratio but expressed linearly okay so the equation uh, that relates the noise factor uh, f to the noise figure on nf is this logarithmic expression and if you solve for f it gives you uh, my spectrum analyzer as a noise factor of about 200 so uh, you know this is the equation that i've written here and the solution is uh, is this number here. Um, and finally, there is also uh, this other way of expressing the power of the noise, the internal noise of uh, the spectrum analyzer, is called the noise temperature. So remember, we had uh, this equation for the temperature noise. Let me show it uh, to you again. Uh, it's uh, here. Yeah, it was this. So the the noise generated by uh, the power of the noise generated by the resistor is this uh, constant multiplied by T and multiplied by the bandwidth, but the bandwidth at the moment is we are considering it's just one hertz, so it's one. And so the noise temperature is basically the temperature that uh, um, you would need to have in such a way that your 50 ohm resistors produce this uh, same power uh, that you see on, on the spectrum analyzer minus 151 and if you solve uh, using this equation uh, for t it gives me about uh, uh, 59,400 uh, degrees uh, um, kelvin uh, so it's pretty hot okay so these are all the uh, uh, way to express the same thing as the noise figure, but I think the noise figure is the most uh, used nowadays in, uh, in data sheets. Okay, to conclude uh, this video, I would like to go back uh, to the data sheet of my, of my amplifier. And, uh, and there the noise uh, performance on the amplifier were expressed in terms of microvolts, as you can see here, okay? Um, so I want to discuss this because sometimes uh, the noise is uh, expressed uh, this way. And again, uh, coming back to our um, uh, general picture that we had here, we have, do, we have done all the calculations in terms of the power of the noise produced by the resistor, power of the internal noise of the amplifier, etc. But, you know, we could have done uh, equally well uh, talking about voltage because there is a relationship uh, between power and uh, voltage. says that the power is the voltage squared divided by the resistance. In, uh, in this case, uh, in this uh, RF uh, application, we are always talking about a resistance of uh, uh, 50 volts. So the noise of the spectral analyzer that we measure is this number, minus uh, 151 uh, dBm, more or less. So being shown at the moment here on the spectrum analyzer that's um, you know the the power per one hertz of bandwidth again this is also called the power density express expressed in dbm and if i convert it to watts i obtain this number so let me just show you the calculation which is simpler so i have basically to express that the power we are the ratio of this power in watts to one milliwatt take the logarithm and multiply by 10. So this is the meaning of dBm, okay? And so if I do the calculation, I get this, this number here. And, um, right. And so if I want to discover this, uh, this uh, V, I just have to solve for this equation, right? Because, uh, I mean, power is equal uh, 
v square in RMS, by the way, uh, divided, uh, which is the average of this voltage, uh, divided by resistance, 50 ohm. So voltage equivalently is the square root of the power multiplied by the resistance. And if I solve uh, this equation, I have done it here, so I've written exactly these equations, I obtain uh, uh, this value of uh, 6 uh, nanovolts, okay? And, uh, and so we can say that my spectrum analyzer has a noise uh, density of 6 nanovolts per square hertz, okay? The square comes from, uh, from this expression because everywhere we had uh, the power here is expressing uh, watts per 1 hertz and so here we get uh, the square root of that. And by the way, if we go to my spectrum analyzer here, it has the functionality of changing the scale from logarithmic to linear. So as you can see at the moment, uh, on the top right side, uh, you can see, um, where is it? My finger on the top right side, you read uh, minus uh, uh, 151. If I click on linear, we get to, it's reading at uh, the moment, five nanovolts, okay? Which is close enough to our theoretical calculations. And, um, and so, yeah, this uh, basically concludes the, this video. We have seen how, uh, basically, to characterize uh, the noise floor, the internal noise, really, of uh, the spectrum analyzer, and to express it in several ways, in terms of noise figure, noise factor, noise temperature, or, at the end, in terms of uh, uh, nanovolts per square root of hertz. And uh, in another video in the future, I will uh, do similar calculations slightly modified um, to calculate uh, the noise performance of this amplifier. Uh, that's all for this video and uh, I hope it was useful. If you have any comments, as usual, uh, feel free to comment in the section below. Bye bye!